All right, well, welcome. This is Dr. Flores, and we're back to our live session. I know I had to move up this uh, call by one hour, so that might have affected some people, but I want to go through and talk about the next process, and that process is validate scope. Now, if you've gone to <clears throat> excuse me, my, my face-to-face training sessions, you know that I spend a lot of time with validate scope because it's one of those processes that is so critical before we close a project. We must first validate that the work was done right before we can close the project. So don't forget that. There's a, there's a big point to be made here, and that is that we can't move to closing until we've done validate scope. What does validate scope mean? Well, it means that we validate that the work was done right. Again, the scope is work, right? So we validate that the work was done right. And so I've got a question for you that is a little tricky coming up soon about how you go about doing that. Okay, so know that we are still in the scope management knowledge area, right? Scope management knowledge area. And we are in which, see if I can get my pen out here, which process group are we in, okay? So we are in the scope management knowledge area, scope management, and we are in the what? Okay, we're not, we're not in planning anymore, right? We're not in planning anymore. We used to be in planning a lot. Guess where we are now? We are in monitoring and controlling. So validate scope is the only process in monitoring and controlling, so it's the only process in monitoring and controlling that does not have the word control. You see how scope in there? Validate scope, it doesn't say control scope. Uh, it, it means that we validate the work to be performed. Okay, we validate the work that we're going to do for the project. So don't forget that. Forget that is really important. We, it's, a, it's, it's one of those processes that I can almost see on the CAPM asking you in which process group we are in. Remember, we have five process groups, right? Let me get a whiteboard here so you can kind of see. See if I can go back and forth here. So we have five process groups. They are CAPM with their initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, and closing. Those are the five process groups. Okay, so five process groups, 10 knowledge areas, and 47 processes. 5, 10, 47. Okay, that's going to change. Now, what it's going to change in the next PMBOK, PMBOK 6, we will go from 47 to 49 processes. We'll talk more about that as we go later in the year, but for now, just plan on taking your exam right now before you have to worry about that, okay? All right, so let's get started here with our knowledge. So just to welcome some of you who are new, some of you who may not have attended before or you're trying to get yourself going with the training, this is the PMP CAPM Live Seminar Series. So whether you're taking the PMP or the CAPM, this is going, this is going to serve you well especially one of the questions that I have today. It's a crossover question. I try to do that in, in most lessons, at least the knowledge. So you get this, this seminar series, you get one PDU, one PDU from PMI, one PDU. Okay, so one PDU from PMI, and that PDU means a professional development unit that helps you in two ways. Number one, if you want to become PMP certified, you have to get 35 professional educational hours. So this is one of 35. And second, if you want to get your PDUs after you've earned the PMP, you have to get 60 of the 60 PDUs. Okay, so this is getting you on the track to getting your 60 PDUs. Okay, so now, uh, the presentation, the way I tackle this is 
to give you some terminology. First of all, to give you some definitions uh, about the process. You know, we are in validate scope. And then I move on quickly to some key terms. Now, some terms that I think you need to know that I know have value, I will spend time with those because I'm pretty sure they're going to show up on the exam. In other words, I'm not going to waste your time because I kind of know taking these exams from PMI that there are some terms that are more likely to surface on the exam and I want you to be prepared. So the key terms, also some questions. So I got, I wrote two questions today for you and I like them. I really do. I think they're pretty good questions. I think you're going to like them. I think you're going to get some benefit out of them. So, all right, so we are in validate scope, right? Validate scope is in the, which process group are we in? Process group. Process group. You said monitoring and controlling. You are correct. We are monitoring and controlling. That's the process group. Which knowledge area are we in? Knowledge area. You said scope management. You are correct. You see? I know it sounds silly and you guys are thinking, gosh, he's already told us that. I know, but I'm going to tell you again and again because I want you to be ready. All right, so validate scope is the process of formalizing accept, keyword now, keyword. Anytime you see the word acceptance, you, I hope you're thinking about validate scope. Acceptance of completed project deliverables. Remember what we said earlier in some of the lessons that our goal is to deliver the unique product, service, or result to the customer? Well, we're not exactly there with we're not exactly there with uh, Validate Scope. Let me tell you why. Uh, uh, this is something that I spend a lot of time with the face-to-face -face courses and I do also with our program that we offer. All right, so monitoring control here. All right, so monitoring control. And then close it. I'm not sure why I created a uh, T account here. <laughs> I'm definitely not an account, but this looks like a T account. All right, so now, the deliverable, the deliverable is verified. The deliverable is verified in monitoring control. Hey, John. I'm, I'm hey, talking doing? about terminology, so you and I are the only ones here. I had to move this session up about an hour today, so. Okay. No worries. So just ask me any questions along the way. I'm talking right now about validate scope and when it is verified. So. Validate scope is about doing that in the monitoring and controlling process group. So right here, we have the deliverable that is verified. In other words, we said that the that the application could generate reports on the fly. So then you're doing a demo and you verify that the application you built could quickly generate reports. That's the deliverable. You're, you're verifying that it did exactly what it was supposed to do. You don't want to do that in closing because if you did it in closing, it's too late. Now, from the PMI standpoint, you should verify the work, the work, because validate scope now, validate scope, the work should be verified in monitoring and controlling and not in closing. In closing, you're basically walking into the room saying, hey, are we done? Pretty much. So there is no verification in closing. The closing process group is what we call administrative in nature. Administrative. So here we're just kind of saying, okay, hey, you know, this is what you said we're going to, you're going to get, you got it, and we're good to go. So coming back here, validate scope is the process of formalizing acceptance of the completed project deliverable. So you should know that definition. And John, before you got here, I made note that Validate scope is the only process of the 47 that does not that does not have the word control in monitoring and controlling because all the other ones have the word control like control quality, uh, control procurement, and those kind of things. But validate scope is the only one that does not. It's just a small thing that you should probably know. Not a big thing, but it's important enough. Now, what is the key benefit? The key benefit of this process, which is called validate scope, the key benefit is 
this process is that it brings objectivity. So this is a very key word for the exam. When I see that word in on the exam, I'm thinking validate scope. Because what I'm doing is I'm validating that the work was done right. There's an objective way. So you say, okay, so you clicked on this button or this link and it took you straight back to the home menu or whatever. You go, okay, well, that's objective. Yeah, I did that. Sure, that happened. So there is some kind of objectivity to the evaluation part of the acceptance process. So think about this. You've got the customer or the sponsor or whatever. They, they go through the demo and they go, yeah, that's doing exactly what we said it was going to do. That's what we wanted. And so it increases the chance of the final product, service, or result acceptance. So validate scope again. We are in monitoring and controlling. All right. Now, that's the, the definition, that I, as I noted before in some of the other lessons, is that there are 47 processes and 47 uh, definitions. So you have 47 definitions. And then there's also the key benefit. So every process has a definition and every process has a key benefit. So just be aware when you're studying for the exam, you should probably have a good idea of both of them. So if you are a note card person, this is a good opportunity. Okay, so now the discussion of the key terms. So three terms that I found in the PMBOK. The PMBOK is the project management body of knowledge, right? And we are now using the fifth edition. We are currently using the fifth edition. So if you're thinking about taking the exam this year, you need to get on the ball and get it done by December because next year we will be in the sixth edition. I'm not exactly sure if it's January, which I don't think it'll be. I think it's more like April, May, June, but just be aware that the exam is going to change sometime next year. I think we're going to get more of a notice sometime around September, October as to when that date will change, but it will change. Now, how sizable? Some people say 20 to 25 percent. So let's just say it's 15 to 20. It's still pretty sizable. I would just guess that you would take the exam this year and not have to worry about it. Okay, so three terms, verified deliverables. These are project deliverables that are completed and checked for correctness through the uh, control quality process. So this means that the deliverable was checked in monitoring and controlling. And I used the example earlier that you're now able to run reports from the new software application or when, you, or when the customer checks out, when the customer is done with the shopping cart and it completes the work in a, they quickly are given the chance to complete a survey. So that is a verified deliverable. Let's just say we want them to complete the survey. Well, as soon as they complete the, the purchase, they have the chance to complete a survey. Some of you uh, have called the airlines or whatever company, and as soon as you're done, they say, would you like to take a survey? Well, that's a verified deliverable. The fact that you are done with the call and now you can evaluate that that is a that is the uh, part of the verify or validate scope i just use the word verify scope because it used to be called verify scope in the fourth edition but now it's called validate scope okay now inspection includes activities such as measuring inspection is a word you a definition you have to know because it's going to come up on the exam Measuring, examining, and validating to determine whether work and deliverables meet requirements and product acceptance criteria. So look at the word measuring. Measuring means that someone goes and does some kind of inspection, some kind of examination of, hey, is it doing what it's supposed to be doing? Hey, let, me, let me inspect before we get it over to the customer because we want to make sure we're proactive. So inspection is a review, a product review, some kind of audit. You're doing an audit to see if it's doing the, what it's supposed to do. 
So think about inspection as something proactive. Something you, we've heard before, if you are uh, into politics at all, is something that um, Reagan said to the Russians, trust but verify. Same thing. So, well, okay, fine, you said you did it, but let me go check. Trust but verify. Change requests now. These are the completed deliverables that have not been formally accepted uh, and are documented along with reasons for non-acceptance. So let's just say that something didn't work when you were done with the shopping cart. It gave you a link, but it didn't take you exactly where you were supposed to go or the link didn't work, or maybe something was not meeting the customer's requirements. So therefore, based on the inspection, you have a change request. Okay, so change request is a really common discussion topic of the exam. If something did not meet requirements, we go back and we fix it to ensure it now meets requirements. That's a change request. For the exam, I want you to be aware of one thing, not just one thing, but one thing for sure, that change management has to be a formal process. So look for that on the exam. Change management is a formal process by which we make corrections. Okay, so change management, formal, formal, formal. Okay, I'm going to keep saying that because it's really important on the exam that you know key words and they can come at you in many different ways. Just be aware it's a formal way by which changes are managed. Okay, I think Gilbert, you got on here. We are in the discussion of key terms. So, all right, so I've got a question for you. I've got two questions for you. So the project team is performing a demo of new features that were created for a hospital's patient management system. A key requirement of this work was to ensure Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, requirements are met. Okay, so now I threw in this HIPAA thing. Now I doubt that they'll probably use the whole thing, but they could use just HIPAA. They could use or make up a term, they could use OSHA on the exam, they could use something that you're supposed to know by working in companies. Today, if you're in any kind of healthcare or even if you just go to a medical facility, you must be aware, we are aware of HIPAA. HIPAA is a patient privacy act and how we release information. So it's important to know, not that you have to know about HIPAA, but you do have to know that it is a requirement. Okay, obviously it's a requirement. Which of the following stakeholders will verify the deliverables for this product? So you see how even if you didn't know what the heck I was talking about up here, the question is asking you the stem, as we call it, the stem of the question is which of the following stakeholders, a stakeholder, and you guys know my, my mnemonic for stakeholders is a PGO, any person, group, or organization that has a positive or a negative influence on the project, which of the following stakeholders will verify the deliverables for this project? Okay. A, project manager and lead vendor. B, lead vendor and team lead. C, CIO who serves the role of the sponsor. Or D, technical specialist who is the HIPAA expert. All right. So tell me what... Tell me which one you would remove from the list. Which one do you think is not the answer? Anybody? What do you think doesn't make any sense here? B. B Bravo or D Delta? It's okay to guess. I mean, just based on your your perception, perspective. I, I can tell you. All right, B. Gilbert, you say B is not. Yeah, you know, the lead vendor, they're important people, but they're not the most important stakeholder. Remember, we're verifying deliverables. This means we're saying it, it either met requirements or didn't meet the requirements. This is how important this is. So you're right. They're important. Lead vendor is important, but they're not as important 
In fact, I just made up lead, vend- lead vendor. I have no idea what that means. I think it means somebody that's important, right? I guess. But they're gone. All right, so Bravo's gone. What else do you think is gone? C. 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 Charlie? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, tell me why. Well, as you said during the um, with PG and O, uh, to me, it's what stands out is that the A would be the answer to this. Okay. But you know that A just run really hard, right? <laughs> right. Um, CIO, yeah, yeah. that doesn't make any sense. The sponsor yeah. is basically the sponsor, but does not have the, uh, I guess, the authority to go ahead and make decisions. It'd be up to the project manager who has the ultimate decision. Okay. All right. Okay. So good point. All right. Good discussion there. Now, think about this. What is the role of the sponsor, though? What does the sponsor do? All right, let me see if you can see this. Y'all can see this down here? It's proof money. You control the dollars? That's right. So the sponsor pays for the project. So would you say that the person who pays for the project or per- pays for anything, would they have a say-so? Yes. So guess why this is a, qu- a tricky question. When I was writing it for you, in the PEMBOK, in fact, I have it over here in my other screen here. In the PEMBOK, it says, that the customer or sponsor must approve the deliverables. Now, the reason I made it harder was I added the CIO. I decided to add that because they can add that on the exam or they can add whatever. But really what we need to focus on is the sponsor. This is a very hard question, one that a lot of people would miss. But I could I could delete what you guys did. You deleted uh, Bravo, which is good. I would also get rid of Project Manager Mm -hmm. because if you got rid of Lead Vendor here, you must get rid of it here. You must. You must. Right? Right. All right. So that's gone. And then Technical Specialist is a very important person, but remember all they're doing, like what I used to do was I was an IT staff analyst. All I was doing was doing the work. I, I, I didn't make decisions for anybody. I just did my work, right? You see how by deleting lead vendor here, you could delete it twice? Uh, Right? Yeah. Right. And then the technical specialist, again, remember what I told you. When I was at USA here in San Antonio, I I was a IT staff analyst, and nobody ever really cared what I thought. I don't care what kind of expert I was. They really, what they cared about was the guy who, or the gal who had the money, in this case, probably a CIO. All right. Okay. Got Tricky. it. Tricky? Guess what? <laughs> I know. When I wrote it, I go, how can I make it extra hard? And I did. But, but, think about the test taking technique. So, when the lead vendor showed up once, and you could delete it once, you could delete it twice, didn't that make your job easier? Mm-hmm. That's what the exam's about now. The exam's about if you delete it once, you better delete it twice because you already said it wasn't it, the person's not a key decision maker for the verification of the deliverables. We're not talking about procurement. See, if we're talking about procurement, then the lead vendor would carry a little bit more weight. We're talking about the final product, service, or result. That's what we're talking about here. All right, good job then. I know I tricked you, but that's all right. That's how we learn. You, I want you to miss it now. I don't want you to miss it later on in the exam. Now, so the verified deliverables obtained from the control quality process are reviewed with the customer or sponsor. So it could be either or uh, to ensure they are completed satisfactorily. The formal acceptance of the deliverables is made by either one of these. Remember, the customer and the sponsor can be the same or they could be different. So the customer can be the one that pays for it, but they could be different. In either case, on the, in the, in, on the exam, these are the two most important stakeholders, the customer and the sponsor. And then if you're asked to, who is more important than the customer on the exam. 
All right. In this case, the scenario you you were told in this case that the, the CIO was the sponsor. You were told that. Okay, number two. Inspections are activities that include measuring, examining, and validating to determine whether work and deliverables meet requirements and product acceptance criteria. All right, so inspections are, I, so what happens here on the exam for, and this happens quite a bit on the exam actually, you're kind of given the definition and now they ask you the tough question, but it's, inspections are activities that include measuring, examining, and validating to determine whether work and deliverables meet requirements and product acceptance criteria. All right, so you're told the definition. In fact, if I go back to here, let me go back to here. Inspections, the measurement, examining, and validation to, to determine whether work and deliverables meet requirements. You see, it's a definition. So that, that for some reason, PMI likes to do that to kind of just give you the definition and now saying, hey, well, I wonder if you can get the question right now. So here's a stem. This is what we call a stem of the question. Inspections are sometimes called all of the following except. Now that's where it gets tricky. So as an inspector, I'm going to go and verify that the work was done right. So I measure, I examine, I validate. All right, so which one of these would you say includes measuring something, validating, confirming? Which one of these would you include as part of that? Audit. Audit, yeah. I'm going to go do an audit. If I go do an audit, I go see, hey, did we do things right? What else is similar to an audit that's not an audit? It's a synonym. Review, like a, you know, walkthrough or reviews. Yep. Okay, you see how by knowing the definition, guess what you did? You got the question right. Y'all see that? Yep. So you knew the definition and then your brain slowed down and you said, you know what? Now I know the definition. Now I'm going to go look closely at which one of these makes sense and then which one is the anomaly. And the anomaly is a change request because the change request will happen after the review, right? After the inspection, not the inspection itself. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. It's very important. I mean, I know this sounds like, oh, you know, uh, it's hard, but not really because you, you slowed down a little bit. You knew that it was a review is also an audit, a product review. And you can call it a walkthrough. Think about a walkthrough. You go through and you walk through the plant or you walk through um, a demo of some kind and you go say, let's go, let's go through it and make sure it, it works exactly as we said before we get it out to the customer. And the only one that was an outlier was a change request, which is if we don't meet the requirements, then we have a change request. But that's not what the question was asking you. The question was asking you for, for synonyms. And that's the way you would tackle that one. Any questions on that one? No. Okay. All right. So I got those two questions. And you guys uh, know that we're, I think this is lesson 11. So you've got all the recordings for all of these. Remember, you have, you need to have 35 PDUs, professional development units, 35 to take the exam. Each one of these recordings, including, or this call you made today, you get one PDU. So after 35, you qualify for the exam. Some of you have already taken training. Once you pass the PMP, you can go back and listen to all of these, and you get 60 PDUs. You need to get 60 PDUs in professional development units in three years, and then you renew your certification. So you can renew it by going back and or just joining us week to week, because we have these week to week. Uh, last week I was traveling uh, on business in Europe, so I could not do the live sessions without doing them at 3 o'clock in the morning. So now I'm back in the States, so I can do them on Monday. Questions, comments, what do you think? Good stuff? Yes. Makes sense, doesn't it? 
Mm-hmm. And so even though we only tackled two, you see how what I wrote today is not designed just to help you with two. It's designed to help you with four, five, 15, 20, because it's the same logic. The lo- logic is the same as to how you tackle these questions. All right, so the next session is next week, which is the, today's the 10th, so that'll be the 17th. 17. Uh, I think I'm going to try to, what works better for you guys, 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Central? Where are you guys? What time zone are you on? I'm at 8. Uh, is that you, Gilbert? Yes, um, I'm at 8 p.m. for me is Eastern Standard Time, yeah. Where are you, Gilbert? I mean, I'm, I'm in Maryland. Maryland, okay. All right, so uh, so this, if I did 8, it would be 9 for you, basically. Right. Because I'm in Texas time. John, you are? Yeah, I'm in Texas. It's Fort Worth. Yeah. Fort Worth? Yes. Okay, how's everything up there? Are Cowboys going to win the, the Super Bowl this year? <laughs> <laughs> at, at some point. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I maybe, think they have a pretty maybe, good shot. Yeah, or maybe the Ravens will win it. So, <laughs> so anyway, all right, well, listen, well, I, I think I'll either keep seven or eight. It just depends. I, I, I know some people like the 8 o'clock hour here. But we'll 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 do we'll we'll figure it out. But either way, I'll record all the sessions so you guys can go back and listen to them. All right? Okay. Oh, that'd be all good. right. Make sure y'all spread the word and let other people know. Let's try to get some good discussion on these. And uh, just once I send you the link, you can forward on to anybody else you want. Okay? Okay. Not a problem. All right, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Bye bye.